Um, thank you all for coming. This is an amazing turnout for an amazing uh, event and an amazing person. I will uh, give you, uh, Kayla, thank you for that uh, introduction. I'll give you a little bit more background on, uh, on Richard uh, before we get into it, and then we'll talk about the uh, topic at hand. If that's okay. I okay. Bet. All right. Um, he was born in 1934. Uh, grew up on a farm in Oklahoma. That was during the Great Depression, so you can picture that. Every, uh, everything is all black and white. I still remember it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, hard worker, good student, um, creative, but um, more interested in music than art, it seemed like. Um, it, some of you know, and anyone who actually watched the video on the Kickstarter page know firsthand that Richard is still a really good piano player. Um, he went to Oklahoma State and then UCLA's Graduate School of Design, started his career very briefly in Dallas, but then moved to New York, moved here in 1963 with his wife Barbara and their first child. Barbara's right here. <laughs> oh, these years later. Um, he established a, a Gibson Daney with Phil Gibson 64 about 10 years later, later um, set up Daney and Blackburn with Bruce Blackburn in 1973. Um, so far, so good. So, it's all true so far? <laughs> Accurate so far? Okay. Um, yeah, I, like, um, I, I've been joking to some people. When I was waiting across the street to come here, um, on Broadway, I was waiting for the light to change. This big, big bus came by, and it has a big ad on the side for this uh, multi-part documentary that um, uh, CNN is doing now called The 80s. And so it's like this historical, nostalgic look back at this bygone era. And there are lots of people here who, like me, arrived in New York in that nostalgic bygone era. And at that point, um, uh, Danny and Blackburn and Dick Danny were very well established. Uh, uh, and Dick was a, uh, a titan in the field, uh, known for um, elegant, intelligent work, um, had a hand in transforming uh, in the, in the pre-internet era the way that corporations communicated internally and externally with things like annual reports and graphic programs. Um, his client list involved all these household names, AT&T, Bristol Myers, Pratt & Whitney, Bell Labs, FIT, South Street Seaport Museum, Morrill Sloan Kettering, Harvard Business School, won many, many awards three U.S. Presidential Awards for Design Excellence. And in the midst of all that, he found time to devote to working with his design community to build respect for the profession. He was elected to the Alliance Graphique International in 74 and was for many years head of AGI's U.S. Uh, delegation. Uh, and then I think uh, Perhaps most importantly, from 77 to 79, he was uh, president of AIGA, then called the American Institute of Graphic Arts, uh, at a moment in time when the graphic design profession was uh, represented by a group that saw it primarily as a New York-based club of insiders. Uh, more than, as much as anyone else, uh, Dick Daney was responsible for expanding AIGA to a national chapter-based organization. Uh, having spent time in Oklahoma and Dallas, you really understood, I think, that good design can come from anywhere. He um, lives today with Barbara in uh, Napa Valley, California. He's come back to uh, the Strand to be with us tonight. We're talking about a project of uh, Dick's that in many ways is emblematic of his career. It is a hugely, it was a hugely ambitious assignment, highly visible with uh, uh, great consequence uh, uh, and a huge public face. But at the same time, it was executed, and you can see slides up there, you know what I'm talking about, with simplicity, understatement, and grace. Um, it's a story that uh, goes from triumph to tragedy of a sort, and now back again. And here we are tonight. So one more time, welcome Dick Daney. So, um, um, <laughs> so it was uh, 1974, you get this request for proposal, right? Exactly. It was uh, July yeah. of 74, right. In those days, so, there's, so just to set the scene, 
Can you just, you worked at one dog Hammer show plaza up on First Avenue in 45th? Yeah, it was a little later. That would have been after we did the first Ah, so where, 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 where was we your office? We were at uh, Gramercy Park on the beautiful, a block beautiful. Yeah, so. 137. So, um, East um, 19. so when you got that RFP, what would your office have looked like? Just, just sort of set the scene for us. It was a triplex on the top, very civilized, a good looking place, non corporate. <laughs> Most unusual, big gardens out back, and um, and there were five people, including the receptionist. So, so <laughs> when we got the RFP, we were this big. No, and the, this big. And the RFP was from was it was it, was it from was it postmarked on uh, NASA or does it come, did it come from like a yeah it, it came from NASA and of course uh, NEA was behind all this the uh, National was, Endowment for the uh, Arts uh, yeah, yeah and they were uh, you know they had uh, sponsored this big program for uh, federal graphics improvement. And uh, they were the driving force behind all this, and they basically did the um, setup by uh, doing a graphic audit of a, a federal agency. And this was one of the, I think, the first two agencies that got the nod. Yeah. And, uh, and I have to say right off, because Bruce and I had only been together a year, um, I do believe that Bruce's hand and had a huge hand in our just being invited, yeah. you know, because uh, he had done the bicentennial symbol at Shermayf and Geismar. So um, they were very keen on that, and it had something to do with inviting this almost unheard of young firm. Yeah, you were the dark horse in that. Dark time. horse, yeah. and um, I still can't believe it got yeah. <laughs> to this day. Yeah. And yet the proof is. Uh, uh, Ready to be autographed after this uh, presentation. Um, the, um, uh, th 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 that moment in time when the federal government decided that design was important almost seems like this surreal anomaly now. What, 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 what came together to make that happen? It happened under but Nixon. It, 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 more surreal because it was under Richard Nixon. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the fact is, uh, it, that's such a warp, you, can't, you just can't deal with that part of it. <laughs> However, it only takes one person sometimes to make a huge change, and that would have been Nancy Hanks, who headed the NEA and, and just had the flair for it. She had a, a drive, an ambition, a tremendous interest in design, and realized that we were so far behind the rest of the world, especially Europe, um, and that something had to be done about it. Yeah. You know, not only were they not organized, but they weren't organized looking. And so she thought if, if we could really make them look better, the concept was free to core. Yeah. You know, we could really make them look better, then the agency might perform better. And I think it was a legitimate idea, concept. Yeah, yeah and the, um, um, the RF, I, I'm going to get a little bit um, nerdy with your permission. Uh, oh, sure. You, you sort of like... I like you that way. Boo or grumble or just um, start clapping. Give me a long, <laughs> slow board clap if it starts getting a little bit too much for people in the audience. But um, in th this RFP, was it just asking for a cost proposal or was it asking for a creative presentation? Yeah, I think people were very surprised because it was not a, a visual presentation. You didn't have to show your wares and you certainly didn't do any spec work. So it was really just the facts. And that uh, meant that we had to respond to all kinds of nonsense. It was a federal, you know, proposal, so it was full, full of stuff that was irrelevant. Uh, but but they, you have to realize they had no experience in this realm either, yeah, yeah, so yeah. you couldn't fully be blamed for it. Um, today, you might want to blame them for almost anything. But <laughs> the point is that they, uh, it was written kind of awkwardly. But the point, they wanted to uh, know how much it would cost. Actually, that was predetermined. You could only bid one number, you know. And? And the number was, was $9,000 for probably about $50,000 worth of work. It was $9,000, nine comma zero, zero, zero? Mm -hmm. Okay, there we go. <laughs> and, um, you know, that sounds like a lot, but I, I honestly... <laughs> hand it was the 70s so a um yeah. you could uh, you could buy a nice car for nine thousand dollars mm. <laughs> yeah you probably could the, the fact is that we all knew that this was really important stuff yeah. and so we were going to do it and give our all regardless of the, the you know the tab on it and I, I mean literally we must have spent 50 on it yeah. uh, to get it done but so it was a, a written submission and we had a receptionist, Barbara Vianzova, who couldn't see 
very well. He's had thick glasses. I don't know. And none of these, these people here tonight knew her. She was just a great person. She claimed she was a Russian aristocracy. And I'm not here to say she, she wasn't. <laughs> uh, she was a wonderful person, but she simply couldn't see. Yeah. So she was our typist. <laughs> now, we had this RFP, if it was this thick. And uh, I can remember Bruce and I leaning over her shoulder. No, it's that key. You know, we're going to... <laughs> this is the era of whiteout. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Carbon paper whiteout. We had more whiteout on that <laughs> submission. It added five to eight pounds to the submission. <laughs> and we submitted it that way. Yeah. And obviously got the job. Wow. <laughs> and then, uh, um, uh, do you remember? That, I think that was the key, really, the whiteout. Yeah. Who did you, um, you, you know, who you were up against? We, to this day, we don't know. Uh, I can tell you there were, there were eight firms. Hmm. Um, it was so early and so embryonic that uh, I don't think they hardly knew who to invite. Mm -hmm. But uh, there were bigger names, I know that. And then um, to jump ahead just a little bit, is because we did three other federal agencies afterwards, yeah. um, it increased incrementally. Mm -hmm. So the next one, it doubled. There were about 15 firms. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then it kept going. Oh, the, 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 field, the field of competition increased, but not the fee. I thought you were going to say the fees increased. Oh, never. <laughs> <laughs> there was no chance of that happening. Yeah. And uh, as a matter of fact, uh, hourly rates stayed the same over t 10 years on all these different projects. Yeah. yeah. Um, really, really great. Uh, so um, you um, did you just, you submitted the thing, then you waited, then the phone rang, yeah. and they said you got the job? Yeah, or did you have it, to? Uh, and it was very pristine, as I've described it. Yeah. You know. And, uh, and, and then it, it took a couple of us. What they did was they, they brought in a team of... Uh, professional experts and nobody of course that would be bidding on the job but I mean, we're talking about leaders I mean it was the guys like uh, Herbert Ballin and, and yeah. uh, you know of that rank and so they made their decision and analysis and one day we get the call mm. we were thunderstruck yeah yeah, yeah really I bet, I bet. Um, in fact Barbara Brianza came to us she says Richard you got the Nazi job. <laughs> and I said, give me a break. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. No. Wow. wow. Yeah. Um, so when you got started with it, did you have to do the thing that you would do in 2016, which is like interviewing stakeholders and putting, you know, like, you know, do you have to talk no. to everyone and find out what their, what their dream was, what well, three uh, words they associated with NASA or stuff like that? There was that? very little, <laughs> very little contact. Uh, actually, but there was a tremendous amount of research, so th but they did almost all yeah. of it. And they, they dropped on us some tonnage, of, you know, stuff that they'd been gathered together for this graphic audit. And so that was all compiled already, so they just dumped it on us. And then there was a lot of background statements. We did have access to yeah. good people at uh, headquarters. And, uh, and, and what was, um, uh, can you sort of describe what NASA looked like? I mean, everyone can mm. presumably picture uh, the, uh, uh, what was then the logo of NASA called, nicknamed the Meatball, and which has been uh, uh, restored, which is the uh, tragic part of the story. But it, that was like, the, the whole NASA up one side and down the other was, just filled with a lot of graphic inconsistency and dated kind of insignia and things, I bet? Well, I, th I don't think anybody would believe what a mess it was. I mean, it was terrible. Uh, just a, a lot of garbage. Yeah. And uh, the reason for that is they did not have graphic designers at any of the centers. Uh, also, NASA was comprised not so long before that of uh, individual centers in NACA. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So now, now NASA comes into being under Dwight Eisenhower, and uh, you know, but they barely pulled it together. And um, th the reality was, the centers were, and anybody that worked on this, like Stephen down here, kn knows this, but they were very independent, and they were very jealous of each other. I mean, it sounds crazy, but but they weren't really one organization. And uh, they were very competitive, and they they liked it that way. It was quasi militaristic. They had like a, a yeah. There was some of that. Way. There were yeah, yeah. There was a lot of uh, flyboy stuff. And, yeah. Uh, and um, they loved the military. Oh my god. Yeah. Yeah. And you know all the astronauts that started out had that background. 
Yeah, fighter pilots. Oh, yeah. Right stuff. We're fly boys and yeah. really, really strong yeah. personalities. Yeah. And, and we're, so um, in, into this milieu comes uh, uh, you and Bruce and your designers. Were you sort of viewed as these exotic experts from New York who cared about uh, um, strange things like typefaces and I mean, probably the probably they didn't think we're very exotic <laughs> but, uh, I think it's an alien world yeah yeah uh, and you can understand that most of these people even in administration and, and it remains so today at NASA they're scientists first right researchers and and, and maybe aeronautics professionals and, and the like and a lot of military that's probably changed somewhat now over the years, but that's what it was, and engineers. Yeah. My experience, my worst experience in my career have been with engineers. Really? Yeah, and scientists. Oh, really? I love that medium, you know, yeah. uh, all this technical stuff and, and the mathematics. And, you know, I really love what they do. In fact, I love what NASA does. Totally. So, so why, why, why are they not receptive clients? Um, well, if, if, if you look at the profile, I don't know if Chris Bananas is he or not. <laughs> yeah. Magnificent writer who did the essay on the book. Um, uh, we both had personal experiences in the family with engineers, too. But you, you don't want to generalize too much. But they're all smart as a whip. They're incredibly clever. Uh, their IQs are off the chart, usually, and they can do it better than you can. The fact is, they simply can do it better. And I always like to say, if, you, if they were going to build a boat in their backyard, it would be the best damn boat ever. You know, and so you have a kind of, they actually can pull a lot of this off, too. <laughs> and they have a low regard for things aesthetic. You know, they think we're just going to see the pants, or it's just intuitive, or it's just, and a lot of it is, but you know, we're trying to do a serious labor and, and be honest about it. And in fact, we did a tremendous amount of research to, uh, to back up anything right. we ever did over 10 years. But, uh, you know, that's, so that was the mindset there is almost like an intrusion no. because they could do it. When you, um, did you, so you had, you had meetings, you sort of oriented yourself. Then did you come back and show them a recommendation? Well, we, uh, yeah, we did a ton of work. I mean, we literally worked day and night. Um, the NEA was pushing us hard because the, the, um, the NASA program was out front. It was one of the very first ones, and it was very sexy, and they knew that if they could get a win here, you know, that other agencies would pay attention. It would turn heads, which is exactly what happened. So they were pushing us hard, and they, you know we were so small, so we were breathless the whole time. You know, there weren't enough hours in the day. But uh, we came back on the first of October of that year with the presentation, um, which was to replace the meatball with something that that would be more useful. Mm -hmm. And it turned out to be a very simple form. I mean, it was so simple that uh, they wouldn't like it. Yeah. So. Well, well, wait. Well, how, how many how many solutions did you show? How many alternatives yeah, did would, you give? That, them? that would be one, uh, a single one. The fact is, you might think, well, we need to have some tweaking or this and that. No, it was the very one you see on the screen. There were 25 demonstrations which backed it up, uh, and those demonstrations were extremely thorough. And they were signing, there was the, every, every kind of ground vehicle, aircraft, helicopters, the space shuttle, uh, uh, film. You know, we did the whole thing. Yeah. Right? We, knew, we were trying to make it completely understood that it was a design system, not, yeah. a, not a badge that you just stick on to things. A totally different approach. To it. Because the, not only, what makes uh, NASA unique is not only among federal agencies, is they, they have this talent Extra, extraordinary talent yeah. and uh, they can do it better um, but also they work with industry you know all these contractors yeah. so they have a lot of stuff at their disposal right. and uh, you know so that that complements uh, the thing so we had to answer all that and show as a true program and we brought that in a demonstration of about 25 30 boards and uh, and slides and yeah. um, well, like, like, the, like on that screen yeah yes. Some of the things, yeah, yeah. and um, uh, those are all just models. Yeah. yeah. When you, now, when you were leading up to that, did was it was 
did you and Bruce know that was a solution? Did you hit on it early, and uh, or did you actually? Uh, I wouldn't say early at all. Um, there's Alex. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but anyway, uh, no, it, we actually started doing things that I would say were more allegorical, not not looking like the meatball, but with a story in it. You know, yeah. more illustrative things that were perhaps textural or in this and that. And, uh, you know, we pursued a thousand different approaches, and, and we all, Bruce and I, Bruce did a tremendous, uh, had made a tremendous contribution on the front end. But this was, um, this was what we did, and we kept backing into it, and, and it got simpler and simpler. Right. And that, the reason for it is because we wanted it to apply across the board, and there was government printing was terrible. We wanted it to be something you could reproduce, which the meatball never was and uh, also to be seen from eight miles away on a shuttle. Yeah. Stuff like that. So we demonstrated all of it, and, uh, and that's what it took. So, so I'm, I'm picturing it's a conference room table, a Kodak carousel slide projector, buzz, click, next slide. You guys mm -hmm. are talking. How many people in that room? Not many. Um, I'd say about uh, eight or ten. And, and what was the uh, reaction? Uh, it, was, it was kind of stunned silence through, through much. <laughs> um, but I'll tell you this, that, that that's when we first threw an orange-red logo up on the screen. You know, that was what, you know, it was really amazing. <laughs> and, um, but as we started to do the demonstrations and the applications, you could, it was warming up. And uh, it got, there was some buzz in the room, and there was conversation, and you could just see through the whole process, which took, let's say it was 45 minutes of that, it just got better and better. Mm -hmm. So it just, we knew on the spot that it was justified that it was the only way to win them over, was to have gone the extra mile and spent all this time, energy. Um, and, uh, but then when we, when we got through with it, of course, that was our presentation, and so we asked them for reactions and anything they wanted to know. And, and when, yeah. when, what were the questions? Do you remember? Well, well the most, one of the most profound uh, moments of my career was when uh, Dr. James Flesher w was the head of it. And uh, his predecessor, uh, George Lowe, um, was, it, was his associate administrator. And so Lowe, they knew each other really well. So Lowe knew that something was bothering Fletcher. So he said, to, so what do you think of this, this logo? You know, what do you make of that, Dr. Fletcher? He says, well, he said, I kind of like it, but you know, something s seems to be missing. And so uh, he said, well, what is that? And he says, well, there are no cross strokes in the A's. And, <laughs> Detail-oriented guys to notice that. Yeah, they, they all come in the same background. Mm -hmm. They made it to the top. <laughs> so, so, so uh, Dr. Lowe says to him, well, uh, well, why does that bother you? And the response is extraordinary. It's a long pause. He says, well, I just don't think we're getting our money's worth. <laughs> now, the, now the stunned silence is coming from the designers. I mean, <laughs> uh, incredulous was probably the reaction. Uh, so then, they, then it turned to the color, and and, uh, and he said, "In the color, this is Dr. Fletcher again." And he said, uh, "You know, the color bothers me. So far, we're not batting. Uh, we're batting zero, maybe." <laughs> anyway, he said, uh, and so Dr. Lowe said, "Well, what, what, what would be better than?" The, he said, "Well, blue would be better." Uh, space is blue. And uh, Dr. Lowe says, no, uh, space is black. <laughs> <laughs> now these are the, the highest <laughs> possible level before you go into orbit, <laughs> these guys. And uh, in a sense, I think it sort of broke any tension that might have been there. Yeah. And, uh, and we probably felt a little bit better about it too. Um, but the fact is, then we went from there and we talked it through, well, why would we use that color? Obviously, everything we started doing was with blue <laughs> in the studio. That's all we did was blue, blue, blue. And I said, wait a minute. <laughs> you know, that's, what, that's too expected, you know. And we picked this, this really high energy thing because the agency was can do. And, and they did stuff that nobody else could do. Yeah. You know, and so this, we wanted this fatality to come through. And so we picked it. And, and they actually started to really like it later, yeah. And, and did you, um, um, 
going back to that A without the crossbar, I mean, did, did they take any comfort in the fact, I mean, I always assumed it was mimicking the shape of the nose cone of a rocket. I mean, that just seems like obvious. Yeah, that's really the essence of it, and, uh, and lift, yeah. you know, ascent. Uh, it, it's subtle, but it's there. And, uh, you know, the sound waves coming off the front of an aircraft or uh, a spaceship, yeah. So um, what did you do? So did you leave the room knowing that you had sold it? We did not oh, uh, know that. We went and got on the shuttle. We thought our chances were better than 50-50, but we had no reason to believe that it was going to be. As a matter of fact, what we knew was going on in these federal redesigns was that uh, they had only agreed to do the phase one. And they did it, and I think this was true of other agencies as well, they did, it meant, let's see what you got. Yeah. You know, you can, they'd trot you out, they wouldn't have to spend a lot of money, and if they didn't like it, they'd just say, forget it. Yeah, no harm in looking. No yeah. harm in looking. And uh, it's just shopping. Yeah. And uh, so, uh, the fact is, uh, within a, well, the next day I heard from our coordinator, James Dean, who was a tremendous guy. And he said, your presentation yesterday was absolutely first rate. Congratulations. So, well, it was a glimmer of hope. <laughs> hey, but he's an underling, see? Yeah, 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 yeah he's not. Um, about a week, we get the green light, and it was, it's a go. That's in the NASA vernacular, right? Yeah. It's, it's a go. go. Yeah, 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 yeah. A lot of joy in Mudville. Yeah. <laughs> so you guys must have just been thrilled, right? Oh, thrilled. Yeah. Yeah, it was, it was surreal. And um, we knew we had done a great job, but just just pulling it together, and they had to sell it, and and you know we knew it was going to be right for them, you know, for decades. Um, but but still, it was very adventurous pursuit. Yeah. And of course, NEA was happier than we were. And what? And so when it became public, what was the response on Twitter? <laughs> Um, but you know, but, but they, that, that's actually, I mean, like, did, the, did, did regular people notice that NASA had a new logo? Did they think they were supposed to care I, about this? You know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't know. Uh, but uh, as you say, in an age, in today's world, you know about in a nanosecond. Yeah, yeah. So everything's out there immediately. So somebody asked last night, you know, well, everything moves so slow. And they say, you have to realize that everything in the, in the manual is a pre-digital. You know, it's done by hand. All the drawings, beautiful drawings. It's just great stuff. And it's all done by hand. And the communication was, you know, like horse and buggy. No, no faxes, right? Hey, I don't even maybe, think Well, maybe NASA. NASA, NASA, NASA might have had. They might have had a, yeah. a prototype yeah. of a fax. <laughs> uh, yeah, sure they would have. Yeah. Um, Under wraps. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, the... Um, uh, uh, there must have been these um, uh, landmark moments where they installed the logo mm -hmm. as a sign or put it on mm -hmm. a, uh, a vehicle or a spacecraft or something that just must have been thrilling for you. Yeah, and I think it was more thrilling. The, the, the print applications, well, that's just kind of business as usual. I mean, and, and, the, and the publications still look terrible. So even though you put it on, the main thing about this was you could put it on these busy, busy, complicated um, uh, publications. And it, even if they didn't look good, all of a sudden you had a really neat signature in the corner. Uh, so it survived through all of this. And then eventually we started redesigning these materials themselves. But the whole point of it was to survive in a, in a rather cluttered environment and a work. And the thrilling part, most particularly, Michael, was when you, you see it on something three-dimensional. You know, even if it's just a tour bus, but certainly a rocket. <laughs> a big rocket. <laughs> or later, the space shuttle. I mean, it's absolutely thrilling. Um, you know, in dimension, that was really part of the, our purpose all along, was to make it visible from miles away and strong and masculine and make America, America proud. And uh, that's, that's essentially what happened. So it did get tremendous amount of press. Uh, it happens more slowly, obviously, than it would today. But uh, the, the broadcast teams picked up very, very fast. I think they saw it as there was a change. You know, and, and it was actually, it was interesting, it occurs to me, it was a very telegenic sort of identity. It was mm -hmm. actually, you, you may or may not have been thinking of this, but it was actually something that would show up really, really well on television. I mean, uh, the, the meatball uh, 
you know, just must have looked like a mess. Uh, well, uh, you know, even even broadcast was less effective than it is now. You know, the graphics are, and somebody, I think Chris made this point in his article, that even um, on the web today, you know, the meatball holds up 20 times better than it used to, but they've simplified it and yeah. brought it back, you know, where it can, can, has a chance now. But uh, no, ours was just made for this stuff, you know, if it was behind a, a Walter Cronkite, for God's sakes, you know, four letters just streaming behind him. It was just like it was meant to be, you know. Yeah, did you have an um, ongoing relationship with them that continued on into the 80s and into the 90s? Well, we we worked on special projects and we did supplements um, that fleshed out the program. So that, that went over about eight or ten years. Um, I did personally did a lot of um, you know posters and things for educational purposes and, and the like. Um, TV uh, opening, closing things, you know, kind of really pretty things that. Uh, so he's got more and more exposure. And all of this is, it was free publicity. I mean, nobody ever got, as you know, Michael, nobody ever got the publicity that NASA did. And when the manned space flight program was on, America was so invested in and so proud. And, uh, you know, it was just incredible. And so they got this automatic press. Yeah, it didn't cost a cent. And, uh, and of course, our program seemed to be customized to, you know, to take advantage of it. And so by the early 90s, it must have just been ubiquitous throughout the whole NASA uh, system, I'm guessing, right? Ubiquitous would be a good word, yeah. It, it, I mean, sure. it, it had really been, I mean, it had plenty of time to roll out and was fully Well, it in. did, but, uh, you know, the, there was an enormous schism inside the agency because the old guard, which was represented by the kind of jet jockeys and, and the, 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 that crowd the older personnel never liked this solution at all. So really over the years, there was a lot of backbiting and a lot of uh, subterfuge. It, it never stopped. Yeah. And, um, and, and, and yet the young people adored it. I mean, yeah. I, now you see the results of why that has come to, the fruit that you know, has been born of that. So, um, but then uh, the, uh, the moment came when suddenly it all got undone. Can you sort of like describe, can you, can you describe what the context for that was? Because it still seems amazing to me that, I mean, like you can have an opinion about these things or, you know, infighting in an institution or a corporation, but to kind of undo something that was not just, you know, 18 months old, but decades old at that yeah, point. Yeah, decades old. Well, it, it only took one administrator. And, uh, you know, there was this ferment that had always been there, and we had to deal with it. Uh, our staff, everybody was well-versed in, uh, you know, the, uh, the movement against it. And a subterfuge is the best word because it carried on. But um, the, the word came well, because this administrator who wanted to make some really serious changes in the agency, uh, fundamental changes in how they did business, and he was charged, actually, with trying to tremendous cost savings and the like. And he, I think at the core of that, he just wanted to make a statement to his employees, you know, everything's going to change. And so he, I don't think it was a graphic, you know, it's just was, he threw down the gauntlet. He said, we're going to do this, and it was very popular, especially with the people in his immediate surroundings, the people that, you know, the older guard. And... Uh, I think he, it, his administration, I believe it, they, their motto was something like faster, cheaper, better. Yeah. Uh, that's what happened. And so this was just a, a casualty, really. And but um, um, the story I heard was he was um, doing a tour of the terrain in his early days and just pointed at the, pointed at your logo mm -hmm. on a sign or something and said, could I change that if I wanted? And someone said, Anything you want, boss? And yeah, yeah. And then sure, then you can change it. Sure, you can change it. That's not but so, a problem. But and, 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 and I've always assumed that it was couched in returning the agency to the glory days of Gemini and Apollo or something, you know, or... Yeah, to the, the romance, it's, it's, yeah, which was, it flies a little bit in the face of this faster, cheaper, better. Yeah. You know, but, but the purpose was to, you know, the magic is back, I believe it was his term. But yeah, yeah the magic quote. is back, yeah. yeah. Um, See, he, 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 I think it's fair to say, Chris knows better than I, that, um, you know, that uh, that was his motivation. 
um, I think, to use his term, in, in the, the vote isn't in on, on all of that. He was disliked in many ways for his policies and everything. But to be fair about it, I don't know. I think he was trying to do the right thing. They had to. They're no longer going to have the money that they didn't pass. Yeah. And it w no automatic funding. Yeah. And did they? Um. Uh. How did you find out about this? Did they ask your opinion about it? No. There was no consultation. I got a phone call from Bob Shulman, who was our internal coordinator, one day that he had gotten wind. Actually, there were several good friends who were on the plane that day that heard this comment about, "Can I change that?" And uh, he warned me that something really bad might happen. And uh, so I couldn't quite believe it, and I don't think I was in denial or anything like that, but I just, uh, I just thought, well, we'll wait this one out. But within another week, the word came down that it had been rescinded. Wow. And they were going to start implementing the old, re-implementing yeah. immediately. And and uh, um, was that uh, was there like a press conference where it sort of was that scheme was unveiled to a presumably grateful public who sort of was supposed to be <laughs> no I, I don't think there was any uh, formal uh, um, event or or any kind of uh, you know hoopla about it it's just uh, he just started making changes across the board in the agency. Yeah. Um, when you um, a bit of nomenclature, when you started on this, the meatball was always called the meatball, right? Yeah. But um, your logo, you didn't present that and said, and here's something we'd like to call the worm. No, I, I, I don't. Th we didn't think that up. Yeah. We didn't care for it too much. As a matter of fact, uh, I would say the whole staff would agree that uh, uh, we hated it. Yeah. Really hated it. First time I heard it was it came out of the Florida Sentinel, uh, and they can't coined the term the worm as a disparaging remark. And interestingly enough, over the years, now today, and I'm talking about real supporters, they love to call it that. Team worm. Yeah. Yeah, team worm. Yeah, team and um, <laughs> you know the the fact is we have to accept that. <laughs> and, you know, it became a term of endearment. Yeah. And uh, I have no problem with that. I can't say it. <laughs> but but I get it and I have to tell you and I'm not going to get into too many personal things in that regard but but it is a, a term of endearment. Yeah. And so um after the um uh after the disavowal of 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 your identity of the 75 identity and the restoration of the uh the meatball um even it, from that moment on there was always a controversy where people People who care about these things would take sides, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And and, and, and and was there any sort of like um? Did anyone write a letter and say? Um, well, in the immediate wake of all this, uh, the NEA of course wrote a letter. Yep. <laughs> uh, that's the least they could do, I think. And uh, but it was and it was a strong letter, but it wasn't much more than that. And then AIGA wrote another letter, which, to be honest with you, I had not seen until about two weeks ago. And it was put in front of me, and I couldn't quite believe it. It was, speaking of strong, it was really well worded. Carolyn Hightower drafted it. Other people contributed. Um, and it made a much stronger case, I thought, than, than NEA's pitch. Except and there was no follow-through. Yeah. So here's an perfect example of aluminum, almost, it's another century, right? Yep. Yeah, all this happened in another century. And uh, without the internet, there was no follow-up, there was no pulsing momentum. I guarantee you today, it would have been totally different. And the public could have turned it around, or even the young staffers. Well, um, to a certain degree, we there's been an experiment to sort of prove that's true. Uh, Correct. I mean, um, mm. fast forward now into yeah, the century. Yeah, fast forward. Yeah. Um, uh, a couple of fellows, uh, Hamish <laughs> Smythe and Jesse Reed, uh, come upon a uh, copy of the uh, of the graphic standards for the NASA thing and yeah. come to you with a proposal, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, do you want to describe um, uh, what great guys they are? <laughs> what great guys they are, or or just even um, um, you know what the proposition was and uh, and what your expectations were about it. Well, just to give a little background, uh, over all these, now it's already uh, 25 years since it was rescinded. And my wife will tell you that 
three weeks to a month is about average between when I get a, a request for editorial background and visual background for some publication, for some editor, for some writer, or from grad student from all around the world. Never gone away. Never gone away. Program had such legs. And at first I resented it because I was trying to move on. You know, I mean, this is not a pleasant thing to have in your life. And it just, it wouldn't stop. And it hasn't to this very day. But I can assure you that when Jesse and Hamish took it on, we're talking about heavyweights here. And uh, they know what they're doing. And uh, it was magnificent, you know, because they pulled this thing off. It was exactly a year ago today that we flipped through the only copy of the manual that I have and decided this was possible with a lot of enthusiasm on their parts and your own uh, inspiration. And you know, and that's been a very big year, a remarkable year, um, especially when you realize that, I mean, the book is out now and it's in people's hands and they can read the whole story and uh, it's a real document. Uh, I'm in front of all these, this assemblage, I'm gonna say I'm so proud of them because there's a, uh, shared goals and uh, mutual respect that is really refreshing and it goes both ways on our parts and it's it's just a wonderful thing to see it's extraordinary to see the success of the program especially the kickstarter yeah. uh, but that's the beginning of it sort of too and do you think there is any hope that someone up at nasa will take notice of this and realize that oh they're losing some sleep <laughs> yeah, right. uh, actually, Good. Good. actually, I'm not sh sure they are, and I'm not even sure that they didn't expect it. But it's it's pretty it's pretty cool, and uh, I think the handwriting was on the wall within the first uh, I don't know, Jesse, 15 hours or something. We surpassed the goal on Kickstarter, and then it just it was launched. It was you know skyward. And um, it reached great heights, and then since then, since that was over, I mean, it just continues. So their their reaction, I think, is is um, at first was annoyance, even though they were very aware of this project and gave their consent. They tried to blunt it, I think, by putting a, a very crude PDF on their website of the whole manual. She she, she you know. It's, understand to try to uh, toward it maybe in the early going so that didn't work and so now they have to cooperate and understand Michael I mean I'm such a fan of NASA, of NASA. Yeah, yeah. Uh, nothing has changed what? so I you know since I'm a kid yeah. um, so I love this stuff and uh, you know the, the reality is that I think that, that they see what it is now, and they are very appreciative, and I think they're being very good about it. Uh, but the reality is, I don't know, it, it, the worm has turned. Let me put it that way. <laughs> um, questions from the audience? Uh, yes. Okay. Get some water. Um, the question is, if you went down like tomorrow and gave that presentation again to decision makers, would uh, is is that are you just one presentation away from rescinding the rescindment? I'll get on a plane. <laughs> um, you know, I mean, there's a I mean, what's what strikes me is that you know NASA is. It's a government-supported agency. It depends on the citizens, taxpayers, dollars, taxpayer yeah. dollar to support it. And they really need public enthusiasm and public support. And you have this demonstration, you know, and this, you know, this room is the tip of the iceberg, but the demonstration that people really do are ready to get passionate about about NASA, about space travel, about that whole era. And it's sort of, it's, it just seems like it's, you know, they own it already. It just would be so easy, so... Well, one of the things that is so uh, illuminating and encouraging about the analytics of uh, Jesse and uh, Hamish's program was that uh, 
you know, some of the biggest supporters are in that age group. That are not, they're not the flight directors at NASA. Okay, so the people that loved our program are now in charge. Yeah, yeah. The young people who were your yeah, supporters. Yeah, so back they the never day. left, and I can assure you, I've got emails out the kazoo. One guy <laughs> has been on a, on a tear for decades. He's a muckraking journalist. He used to work at NASA, and now he's the worst thorn in their side. And he sends me stuff all the time. <laughs> Every copycat version of the logo, he, he I get it the next day. And but his mission is to just make their lives miserable. Now, that really isn't the point. And this is not just about graphics. I think what you're leading to is that it was a perfectly good program. It could last for decades and decades. It cost a fortune to rescind it and to repaint everything and do it all over again to go backwards. I think Stephen Heller said it was a, a giant leap backwards. Uh, I, is Steve here? I, but, but I think I'm quoting him correctly. <laughs> Um, yes. Can you tell us how long it took from going from the meatball to the final logo that you submitted? Was that weeks or months? You, you, you mean how long was the process between getting the assignment and. and actually coming up with going through the creative process to go from what was there to what you submitted? Uh, when you decided on it? Yeah. <laughs> it was about four months. Day and night. Yeah. Four months. 24 7, as we like to say. Yeah, in the back. Just out of curiosity, did the reaction of the Challenger test return back to NASA's roots in any way relieve the state of having a little bit of a Um. Uh, the question—I mean, like I—the question is the relationship of the Challenger disaster to to this. Uh, for, was there a connection between that? Was what was that? Was that administrator brought in after that to sort of restore, um, like as part of a restoration and kind of almost obliterate the recent history of NASA? Sort well, of? No, he, no, he was there um, for the Challenger. He was there for the Challenger, and that's you know that's the the one that disintegrated you know over Texas and Louisiana. By the way, if you're you're involved in a program like this, it breaks your heart. You know, I mean, it's just horrendous. You know that you're going to lose humans in space, and it's worth it, but it's really hard to take. I think that some of the uh, problem with Dan was he didn't step up when that occurred. He sort of hid. Yeah. He went away, and they wouldn't take calls. So it really hurt his image, I think. He, he was about winning. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And, and, you know, this is not, as, as our daughter says, you know, this whole uh, upswing, this rebirth, this thing, it's not about vindication, it's about validation. Mm. And I think, that I love my daughter. <laughs> <laughs> she nailed it. But yeah. uh, so, so that's, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah. Other questions? Um, yes, right there. Uh, when, the kind of, the, the, when they reverted back to the lead ball, did you notice that uh, any of your designs were kind of uh, absorbed and reused in any way? Yeah, did anything improve? Yeah, or did it just yeah, go yeah, all No, no. <laughs> the system stayed the same. And they kept almost everything. They kept NASA red. They kept the color schemes we had. They kept the, the nomenclature of uh, the, the typefaces and weights and everything. They just they dropped the meatball in to where the uh, Stevens got it. Yeah, come in. Yeah, Steven. When the program was rescinded, did anyone raise the issue of what it was going to cost to go back to the to the future? I mean, mm -hmm. it, it seems ridiculous. Imagine presenting that today, you know, one person's idea that he's going to dump this and revive something that was popular yeah. 30 years ago. Nobody challenged it uh, that I know of. Uh, and it, it, 
and then it, and it costs an absolute fortune. The, the, the smoke screen was, oh, we'll just do it over time, and, and therefore it, it doesn't cost a thing. Uh, that's bullshit. But. Yeah. And by the way, the person who asked the question is Stephen Loaches, who was my right arm on this program for all those years. <laughs> he was a designer on our staff, and I, I think it's okay to say that uh, a large number of our former staff is sitting here tonight, and I feel very blessed to have them in our presence in the library. <laughs> we're not going to we're not going to ask each of you to stand, but there's a there's a bunch of them here, and I'm absolutely I'm so proud of them and and to be together tonight. Yeah, there's another question back there. Yeah. Yeah, have you um, paid any attention like to uh, Elon Musk's company SpaceX that has like a, a logo and things like that? Yeah, <laughs> it's slow going for those guys. You know, it's, it's the rockets are, yeah, yeah. are, are a problem. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm I'm totally for it. In other words, if if that's the era, if it has to be this way. And if, if we're not going to send men up ourselves, I mean, somebody's got to be able to do that. And I'm very keen on uh, industry taking a role in it. I mean, it's very sad that we have hitched these rides with the Russians and the Chinese and everything, you know. But that's the way it is. Yeah, yeah. And so for, for commerce to step up and do this, he, he's going, they're going to be able to pull it off. I think they had a big success just recently, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They actually got their uh, rocket back. Uh, um, but it's complicated, yeah. Yeah, extremely complicated, and they had to go from Jump Street. I mean, I don't think anybody gave them the manual on how to go into space. Uh, so that's what we're going to have, and I hope there are a lot more people cooperating. Um, you saw that movie, The Martian? I sure did. Yeah, no, I, I, I detected a little bit of, uh, of uh, Danny and Blackburn influence yeah, in the graphics. A, in the letterings there, <laughs> and uh, and the uh, font, as as Chris calls it, you know, the font is now um, all pervasive, yeah. and so I show these copycat logos uh, as part of the the talk now, and and it's amazing. There's thousands of them. Yeah. You know, we live in Napa, and there's one that says Napa. <laughs> uh, it's the exact ringer. It's it's a dead ringer. I mean, you have to look twice. <laughs> <laughs> it's great stuff. So it's all over the place. It started with Saturn, yeah. the GM car. You know, they named it after this thing. That was your first clue yeah. <laughs> that they were probably looking at NASA. Yeah. So I mean, like, so, you, so there's some. I mean, you could, one could take satisfaction in having influenced the graphic language of a generation to a certain degree. Yeah, it's great I mean, fun. I mean, I'm, I mean, you know, I mean, you, <laughs> you know, Sony Bio's right there, more of the same, right? They put a little dot as their yeah, crossbar yeah. on the yeah. You know, so oh, yeah. it's all pervasive. Yeah, it's all. Yeah. Yeah. But it, it it is kind of uh, flattering in a way, and 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 actually. Um, I think Jesse pointed out that they never seem to get it right. <laughs> the, the, the copycat stuff, there's always something wrong with it, but, but at least they're doing it. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing that, uh, like, um, again, looking at, the, uh, at that beautifully um, produced uh, facsimile of the original manual, the one thing that strikes me is that it really is elegant. It's elegant. It's sort of like so precise. And it actually, um, you know, you were talking about your uh, struggles with engineering culture, but mm -hmm. to the degree that uh, engineers and scientists admire precision and the elegance of a solved equation and a perfectly calculated sum. I mean, it's... It well, really I, think, I think that's where it's come out now. Yeah, that's yeah. why you have a lot of supporters of this magnificent book. Uh, they're, they're space geeks <laughs> first. Yeah. And they, they're drawn to it. So, you know, we're already 40 years old, including the staff. Uh, older, I should say. And so... <laughs> Susan says, shh. Yeah. Uh, but, but, I mean, think about that. That's a very long time. Yeah. And, uh, no, I think that's settled in. I think it's appreciated. I, I can't talk about some things tonight, but, but, but I, I can assure you that that's some of the sentiment. It took him a long time, but it's going to be a, a good thing in the future, for sure. Uh, one more question, maybe? Yeah, right there. I noticed on the 
slideshow that the space shuttle design that you have on there was not the final one that ended up being. <laughs> <laughs> Hardly. Was it your decision? Was it was it done at, at Blackburn's decision to put the United States in upper and lower yeah. as opposed to? Oh, United good States? question. Yeah. First of all, that was a comp, you know. I mean, <laughs> boy, they, they, they weren't quite sure what the shuttle was going to be yet. I mean, it's pretty close to that in, in profile. Yeah, it was right there, yeah. Now, of course, you see the graphics are dominating. By the time you went through all the machinations and the scientific considerations and how this craft would fly safely, there were only a couple of places you could put graphics without bringing the crap down, you know, or <laughs> making big problems. So there was, there was very, it got smaller and smaller, but to speak to your point, some of this stuff is so subtle that you don't even realize it's happened. And this was the face gov first government craft to fly with the words United States on it, instead of United States of America. It's the first craft to fly with Helvetica typeface instead of Air Force block lettering, which is machine bold, you know, the really tall, condensed stuff, ugly as sin. Uh, and, and then we did USA, which was old record. Now, believe it or not, this required the Air Force's consent, which took a long time, and uh, the Congress to approve it. Uh, it, it. It looks so simple now, but United States, USA, and uh, Helvetica font it was all very radical, and, and it required congressional approval. <laughs> you wouldn't get it today, I don't think, probably. Yeah, they, they, can't, they can't even uh, they can't approve a Supreme on, Court justice, yeah, never mind a typeface. Going so. to the bathroom, right. Um, but anyway, that was a great question, because all of this came into play. Um, we, pu we pushed it around, and we found the scientists were telling us where we could uh, apply graphics. And then also other things. The logo couldn't be as big as the words United States, the flags. Well, that was all nomenclature. That was all specified. But it sure it looks different in the finished product, but it still worked. The one that's over here, you know, on uh, the Hudson is the very first craft we did, Enterprise. And uh, the reason it still has the logo on it is because that was a test, a flight test. A shuttle was a flight test, and it never really went into space. Did that answer? Yeah, yeah. good. So, um, in conclusion, I just wanted to make an observation mm -hmm. and uh, describe why I think so many people find uh, this particular story so inspiring. Um, I think that as, I assume there are a lot of people in this room who do creative work, whether it's graphic design, some other kind of design, writing, whatever it is. And I think any of us that do this kind of work get accustomed to rejection. And um, sometimes you're rejected before you even get a chance to open your mouth. Uh, sometimes you um, go pretty far down the road, then you yeah. get rejected. Sometimes you go all the way down the road, and then some, and suddenly uh, find that uh, something that you thought you had won is taken away from you. But I think um, what we find here in this room with this particular publication is that uh, um, good work, once it's done, really can't be rescinded. It can't be obliterated. It can't be taken away. You know, it can be thwarted, but it remains. Mm -hmm. It speaks for itself, and its power is as evident today as it was that day back in October that you presented it yeah. to that uh, little group of people uh, uh, with that slide projector. So, Well, I think uh, that's kind of the bottom line, yeah. and it, it lives on, and uh, it may live beyond what we expect. We don't know, but the, the fact is I mean, that's a beautiful summation, and I'll leave it to you, Michael, to do that. Um, uh, so he's very gifted, as you know. <laughs> uh, but, but that's it. And, uh, you know, our work still pulses. It's still th these guys, uh, Jesse and Hamish, just, uh, it was dead in the water almost, but it was still, it still had a heartbeat and a lot of following, and uh, they've just brought it roaring back to life. It's having a great influence, and I don't think we've seen just seeing the beginning of that, the tip of the iceberg. Well, roaring back to life, having great influence, Richard Daney. Thank you. Thank you.